game with lewdness and carnage. The steamy fun continues in the Cupid Parasite Fandest Sweet and Spicy Darling, which will be finally localized in English in May 2024, the day we've all been waiting for. It's sweeter and spicier and just as hilarious as the original game. A must play for fans. And yes, there is a donut parasite. But as so often with games I love, there's more to it than meets the eye. And the game is more than just some sweet and spicy fun. The fan disc can be described as the second part to Cupid Parasite, continuing after the happy endings, granting the characters a lot of time to enjoy their couple life to the fullest and face some new little challenges together. And on top of that, we get a completely new sweet and spicy character. As you might expect, this review will include hints and spoilers to what happens in the first game. So I recommend you play the first game before you watch this review. Let's start by having a look at what happens to all the couples after they get together. The relationship with Ryuki is challenged by Ryuki's grandma again, who wants him to win a fashion contest. And a nose-up high model who flirts with Lynette, making Ryuki all jealous and confused. After that promotion at CG, I expected more steaminess in Ryuki's route. But I think his route was even less spicy than in the first game. Yuki's route felt like a shoujo anime to me, but not necessarily the good type. It's plagued by useless jealousy and not talking to each other about your problems trope. And for my taste, it emphasized too much how inexperienced and insecure Yuki is when it comes to love. He acts like a psyching brat for half of the route and it takes too long for his personal growth to finally take place in the last chapter. A similarly jealousy and proving one's worth plot had Shelby, because Cupid Corporation is threatened by the big company owning half of Los York, with Eli Omar at the top. His plot was business related again, and he often was on the verge of turning into a workaholic parasite again. On the relationship side, they struggle with working out the roles, and Shelby struggles to control his desire for Lynette. And Shelby's blushing made me squeal a lot. Because I have a Shelby bias, as he's my favorite character in the main game. And he turns out to be the kind of husband who holds back until he can't take it anymore. And I find that absolutely endearing. <sighs> what shall I say? Gil is love hungry. Lynette is love hungry. What even is the plot? Why not just spend the whole route in bed? Sprinkle a bit of crazy action on top and you get Gil's route. It's all lovey-dovey lovemaking. I have nothing negative to say about that. I think even if you didn't like Gil in the first game, you might get carried away by their intense love in this game. A bit more plot, yet not less lovemaking, awaits you in Raoul's route. They face the challenge that Raoul isn't supposed to marry as a rising actor. And like in the first game, you get some really crazy fantasy stuff happening in the latter half of the route. Like really silly. The first game was a serious story in comparison to what happens in the FD. I personally loved it and laughed a lot about all the silly random things happening in this route, combined with a lot of lovemaking. I was more than satisfied with Raoul's route, even though I didn't like him in the base game. Alan. After he ripped our souls apart in the first game. I hoped for a happy-go-lucky route in the FD. Not quite though. While Lynette and Alan are indeed happy, Alan still seems to have lingering regrets and it takes until the happy end to finally find out the true reason why he looks so sad. And while I somehow made peace with the route, it still made me so sad to see Alan still hung up in regrets after I thought he would finally be happy after the happy ending in the first game. Of course, they spent a lot of sweet times together and feel immense happiness, but for me there still lingered a sadness over the route. And I think their fate is yet again a bit too harsh and they yet again have to shoulder and overcome so much much. I wish them a more laid back road, though especially the happy end is very sweet. And a true happy ending, finally. Our scared parasite makes it his task to overcome his fears, not to turn into chi all the time and be seen as an attractive man by Lynette. Very unexpected to me, those two didn't completely figure out the relationship in the base game and don't behave like a married couple, if you know what I mean. So Peter needs to conquer his fears and his horniness, not to turn into an animal, in both meanings of the word. The latter half is filled with a plot of huge scope, which will be a lot of fun for all the plot and deconsenters fans among you. For me, the route could have been spicier, and now can never be satisfied. <laughs> And the plot at the end didn't seem extremely original to me, though the outcome was admittedly charming overall. 
And if the sweet and spicy fun with the old characters wasn't enough, Cupid Corp admitted a new member, a new parasite, Marinese, the destiny parasite. Marinese route takes place after the common route of the base game, the Parasite 5 withdrew the applications and Lynette is worried about her promotion. Thus she seeks the help of a fortune teller who is currently famous on Instagram. His fortunes are known for being accurate, but for some reason he can't see Lynette's destiny at all. And because of that he takes a strong interest in Lynette and swiftly signs up at Cupid Corporation to find his destined partner. A girl who he cannot see the future of. Hmm. Who might that be? But in perfect Cupid Parasite fashion, Lynette is absolutely oblivious and tries his best to find a partner for him, even if they have to travel to the Grand Canyon. I am happy to say that Medanee's route was the perfect Cupid Parasite route, or should I say, Destiny Parasite route. It has all that you wish for in a Cupid Parasite route. The sweet AI with the weird quirk, then you get a fast-paced but not rushed love development with various climaxes. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> and then a sudden silly, quirky, funny, absolutely weird, but kind of still amazing fantasy plot. It was perfect all around. The perfect addition to an already perfect game with an already perfect cast of characters. And I hope you don't have enough yet because the game gives you more. You get three, let me repeat it, three very short but intense extra scenarios with three side characters. Two from the first game, one from the FD. Sometimes they are branches from other routes or just one extra scenario. And regardless of how short they are, one was literally five minutes, they were immense fun and even steamy at times. I was totally overwhelmed by what happened in that short amount of time. <laughs> that is called fan service, I say. <laughs> this game earned the name Fandisk. Speaking about extra scenarios and endings, the name of the game Sweet and Spicy Darling is because each character has a sweet, a spicy and a sweet and spicy ending, with the latter probably being considered the best ending. The sweet ending is mostly harmless, but the spicy endings are not spicy in a way I understand it as in sexy or steamy, but with some characters they can rather be twisted, like a Yandere ending or a really, really weird understanding of love. If you don't like controversial stuff, like really, I would have never expected to see that stuff happening in an automate game on the Switch. They are controversial, not explicit, but controversial. Really illegal things might be happening. <laughs> if you don't like the twisted kind of love, definitely stay away from Peter's and Yuki's spicy ending. If you prefer happy endings, maybe Gil's spicy ending doesn't feel utterly happy. I personally don't dislike the twisted endings at all. I just was surprised to see such endings in this game. It's fun, it's controversial, you've been warned. And there actually is another ending which wants you three times before it lets you in. Three times! That scared the hell out of me after I saw all the other things happening in the spicy endings. But after those spicy endings I don't think it was that bad. <laughs> it kind of destroyed the characters involved. It is very controversial, very immoral, but I don't think it's the kind of ending that needs three warnings. It's just bad, but as you would expect. You also expect gorgeous art from this game and of course it delivers. The CGs are as beautiful as ever with glitter effects. And don't tell me this isn't the most hilarious sprite you've ever seen in your Otoma life. The UI yet again pops. I adore the little details like the kissing animation when you progress so you can kinda kiss the LI all the time. And the system is far less clunky than at least in the Japanese version of the first game with the less loading types. The music slams, though there are fewer voiced tracks, but still every character has their character song. Many of the FDs I've played so far just use the same music and backgrounds as in the first game, but not here. You have all new tracks, tons of new backgrounds, with tons of easter eggs and hidden allusions to either the real world or the in-game world, and the amount of detail and love that was put in them, and in the whole game. That is something you not only sense in the art, but in every second you play the game. This game was designed and written with so much attention to detail, understanding for the player, and so much love for the game. So let me express my love for my patrons, whose continuous support allows me to continue YouTube stress-free, it allows me to focus on improving the quality of my videos. Thank you so much. The Japanese is as simple as in the first game. Half of the words are English words or are pronounced in English or even read to you in English. So I think the game makes it really easy for you if you are a beginner in Japanese. But of 
course you could also wait until May 28th to play the English version of the game. I honestly had some difficulty writing this review because I have so much to say about this game and my thoughts just kept screaming how much I love it and it was kind of difficult to put, an, put it into a more orderly format. I love the game, I think that's clear. <laughs> Why do I love it? Because it's exactly like the first game. The Rouge, which was Slice of Life, a slice of life in the FD. The roots with crazy fantasy stuff happening have very similar elements in the FD as well. The tragic roots with a bigger scope are the same in the FD. I think it's so astonishing how they really managed to make a Cupid Parasite 2. It's the first game, just again, as a couple. But the tone, humor and setting of the game remain the same. I am tempted to say it's funnier and steamier than the first game, but that at the same time would feel unfair to the gorgeous first game. The new character blends in perfectly with the cast to make for a perfect destiny parasite. The new side characters are smoking hot, so much that you want them to have their own game. I mean, look at that pimple. Is that hot or not? And if you seriously disagree, come challenge me in the comment section. And he works at a donut shop. Is that a sweeter job? Hello, we can eat donuts all the time. But also the side characters from the first game get their chance to shine again, like Owen and above all Clara's. I had even more fun hanging out with her this time around. And that's not only because of the fun dirty talk with her. The game is steamy. And I feel like the descriptions got even more intense compared to the base game. Even more than Olympia's Soiree, maybe? Maybe I was just in the right mood, I can't tell. But for me, it was unbelievably steamy. The descriptions were bold and the topic always seemed to be how to make love in even more thrilling ways. <laughs> this went as far as as soon as I saw a bat in the background. I knew exactly what was going to happen next. This game is lewdness incarnate. The plot and relationship progression also matched the original game, and some characters even reverted back in their parasite state by having a problem of working too much or being too much in love, if that even is a problem. I would recommend though to replay your favorite routes in the base game before you play the FD routes, because the game has so many allusions to the base game, and I think it's so much more enjoyable if you understand the meaning of blue cheese in Gil's Root, for example. But as sweet and spicy as the fan disc is, a few days later I realized the true worth of this game. We all know what an amazing MC Lynette is. Being curious, open to new experiences, adapting to her parasites. And that of course stays the same in the FD. Lynette isn't together with perfect guys. But as in the main game, they have their flaws. But Lynette accepts them with all their edges. A relationship is not about changing your partner, but loving and accepting him how he is. And Lynette is the master of unconditional love, depending on which character she's together with. Her love type is a different one, be it the encompassing love, the passionate love, the crazy love. And with these different types of love, the relationship and also their life as a couple changes. Depending on each couple, the ideal life looks completely different. And that is the most important takeaway for me from this game. There's nothing like a right way of living. It all depends on you and your partner. As the characters in the game are so different, likely you will also find a way of couple life that resonates with you, or that is completely opposed to your ideal, that you abhor, or that even inspires you. Not only was Cupid Parasite Sweet and Spicy Darling able to deliver on its title, it did much more than that. It made me laugh and cry. It's a game full of characters that grew on me even more and has inspired me to reconsider the way I think. If you want a game that will leave you sweetly satisfied and maybe even reconsider your own life, then definitely give Cupid Parasite Sweet and Spicy Darling a try. Once again, this marvelous at home game has proven to me that at home games can indeed be life-changing. So let me take you on a journey of how at home games changed my life and might change your life too.